Do you think 10-year-old Char would be proud of Char now? Oh my gosh, are you trying to make me cry? <laughs> Come on now. Um, <laughs> yes, I do. I know that 10-year-old Char mm -hmm. would be very, very proud of Char today. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Interview With My Kid. I'm Jesse, and this is my... Kid. Arlo. Um, this episode is amazing, but before we get into that, you know, I was just in Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's why I have this generic energy drink with me. I'm, I'm still recovering. But what were you doing while I was in Vegas? What's going on in your <laughs> world? You know, your Gen Z, 13 year old, <laughs> almost 14 year old world. Um, honestly, playing a lot of Roblox. And Sims. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, a lot of Sims. Arlo plays mm -hmm. Sims and honestly does not treat their Sims very well. Because I mainly <laughs> just care about the houses. They don't need sleep, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they just build houses and then if their Sims die of exhaustion, they die of exhaustion. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so our guest today is so amazing. She is an award-winning journalist, a media personality. So let's welcome Char Jossel. On to set. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Jesse. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We're course. so happy to have you here. We're Ooh. so excited. Yeah. So how was your weekend? My weekend was fairly relaxed. You know, I caught up on some TV. Um, what are you watching? I just watched that bear show on Hulu. It's it's starring the guy from Shameless. I can't remember his name. Oh, I don't know if you've the, ever seen Shameless. The, oh, yeah. uh, William H. Macy, the main guy? No, 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 no. It's one of his sons. Yeah. Oh. You know who I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah. Is it the one where he's like a cook or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I watched that. I binged that. Of course, Atlanta Housewives. You know, oh, okay. it's Sunday. And then, you know, um, yeah, Saturday I went to a video screening for Never in Never Ending Nina Notes. She's an artist, a trans artist, actually. Oh, and she debuted her new video, and then I went to a pool party. So, Ooh, sounds but then amazing. Sunday was a day of recovery. You know? <laughs> That's when you bring it on down. Yeah, and so, exactly. yeah, it was pretty chill. See, I should have done that. Sunday, I was still partying. Monday, I was trying to recover. And <laughs> I don't know, somehow, two days later, it's. Still, still there, so that's what Vegas does to you, but. Yes. Um, so we just, you know, we really wanna just kind of first get to know you and okay. get to know your backstory and who you are because I feel like a lot of the guests we bring on, um, a lot of their questions are more about their what's going on in their life now, and of course we wanna hear that too, but I would love to just kind of know, you know, some basic stuff, like where, where are you from? So I'm originally from Chicago, okay. shout out to Chicago. Well, a <laughs> suburb right outside of Chicago, but I always yeah. say Chicago because I can see the Sears Tower from my house. Oh, nice. And so, um, yeah, that's where I was born and raised. And then um, I went to college in Oklahoma of all places. Okay. And what, then- What brought you to Oklahoma? What brought me to Oklahoma? Well, they were giving the most money for scholarships. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I don't know. I really wasn't a champion of, of moving there. And it was quite the culture shock coming yeah. from Chicago. Yeah. And then, you know, when I was done with that, I moved back to Chicago for like a year or two before moving out here. Okay. So how long have you been in L.A. now? Eight years as of June oh, 15th, wow. oh, as yeah. of, you know, last month. Amazing. Crazy. Yeah. Do you yeah. like L.A.? You know, it's very love and hate. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to love Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. It's so much slower paced than Chicago. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. In Chicago, we walk with intention. Oh, yeah, in L.A., yeah, yeah. people are walking, you know, taking <laughs> yeah. their sweet and precious time. That's and great. then, you know, I always say, like, with the highways, we because there's so many transplants that come here, you know, you could be driving on the highway with someone from L.A., like a native, a, a local. And you could also be driving alongside someone from Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. I believe that's my theory behind the traffic. No, I you don't know <laughs> if they're from Dubuque, Iowa Literally or New York this, City. Exactly. I say this all the time because my girlfriend is from Canada. Canada, so she didn't understand why people can't drive here. Yeah. And I was like, it's because it's literally a mix of so many people yes. who don't know how to drive on LA freeways. And then the natives, like, just for some reason, because it never rains when it does rain, they still drive like oh it's not gosh. raining. So. Yeah, it's just chaos. And rain is the end of the world. You know, I come from Snow City in the yeah. winter, you know. And so I'm like, the rain, people do act a little timid when it comes to yeah. driving in the no, rain. But anywhere you know, all else. The, yeah. All the oil comes to surface, exactly. that's why. Because it why never rains. hydroplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's scary. <laughs> Um, so going back to Chicago, you, were you born in Chicago? Yes, I was. Okay, and what was that like? What was your childhood like? Do you have siblings? How were you I raised? I do. So I'm the oldest of three. It's okay. three of us in total. And I have two sisters that are twins. They live in New York City. Amazing. No, they are not roommates. <laughs> one is in fashion. One is in music theater. Musical theater. We're five years apart. Okay. And um, my upbringing was one that was pretty 
I'd say like normal and conventional, you know, suburbs, riding bikes, going to the park, climbing trees, all that fun (laughs) stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Both my mother and father were very instrumental, of course, in in my upbringing. But uh, I'm being the oldest you know, has its set of challenges. I'll yeah, put it that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm number seven of eight, so I'm almost the youngest. So I always wonder what it was like for my eldest sibling versus me. It had to be a whole different world. You know, my mother is the youngest of 10 and my father oh, wow. is the oldest of eight. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's a lot so that's of That's a us. lot of aunts and uncles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it is for my kid yeah. and all of their... Uh, cousins, there's so many of them. Yeah. Because there's so really? Many of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have I think like we said 16 or 17. so many. Well, yeah. are you talking about both sides combined? Yeah, I think if we combine, it's like almost 20, right? Oh, wow. more than 20. It has yeah. to, if we combine, it's probably like 30. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, listen, it'll just keep snowballing. I know. Yeah, there. seriously. Yeah. There's more babies coming all the time. I want more babies. So. <laughs> um, so, were you raised conservative or religious at all? So, yeah, I come from a, I was raised in the Baptist church, but what I will say is that even with some of the conservatism that comes with the church, my mother in particular has always been a bit of a rebel. And what I mean when I say that is she never turned her back on me, neither did my father, but my mother, uh, my relationship with her has been one that has been, I think, a test for both of us, Mm -hmm. you know? And that, you know, she had to really ready herself to uh, adjust. I mean, it was all an adjustment. You know, frequently, you know, it's, it's, it's said that when people transition, it's a transition for the whole family as well. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely experienced that. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so um, being as that, like none of my aunts or uncles, I think my aunts and uncles and cousins, um, came around to accepting me and acknowledging me for who I know myself to be mm-hmm. because of the direct proximity of my parents doing so. I love so. that. Oh, yeah. I and love so, that so much. And so, yeah, because while they, yeah, I go think, ahead. I think the mom or the dad, but especially a lot of times I see it with mothers in particular, when they show the rest of the family that mm-hmm. they have your back, they love you no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yes. If anything, they're proud of you. I really see everyone else follow. Yes, and my mother is a bit of a firecracker, yeah. so they knew not to try her. <laughs> if you had to say, you better say it behind her back. Right. Yeah. Okay, man, that's amazing. She I doesn't love play that when it comes to her babies. Right, yeah. that's how it should she be. Doesn't. Of course. I don't play when it comes to mine either. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how old were you when you think you first knew that, you know, maybe how you were assigned at birth didn't match how you felt? So, um, for me, this probably would have been around second grade-ish, around okay. eight. Okay. But I always, now I can laugh about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a film that came out starring um, Vivica A. Fox and Morris Chestnut. It also had Monique and a few others, Anthony Anderson. It was called Two Can Play That Game. Mm-hmm. And I believe it came out when I was in middle school, like that 12, around your age mm-hmm. right now, Arlo. And... I remember freaking out because the the film is very binary. It's a battle of the sexes, right. right? And I remember thinking to myself, like looking in the mirror and having a conversation like, I don't want to be running around with Morris Chestnut. Like they, they were living professional lives and I was right. like, I don't want to have the briefcase mm-hmm. and the goatee right. and be with the boy. And I granted, I never uh, was around the boys in that way. And mm-hmm. so I say that you know, even growing up, there was an asterisk above my head because I was someone who never had, I guess, the privilege of masking my femininity. I have always been, you know, the doll, so to speak, always. And so I never, even if I tried, I, I, I couldn't. And so for me, acknowledging that early on, because I never really identified with being gay, mm-hmm. uh, I think that because that's what everyone around me was telling me that I was prior to me having the uh, opportunity to explore who I knew right. myself to be, um, I kind of rode with that. But I yeah. never really, I never really felt comfortable there. It never felt like a, a home. It, it never felt comfortable, and so. Um, I was pretty young. I'd say definitely before, you know, adolescence, mm-hmm. I, I right. recognized that there were just certain things that, that I did and yeah. certain ways that I yeah. navigated, 
you know, um, that were just different. Even in church, like we were just talking about church. I right. sang in the choir. I grew up singing in the choir and I sang alto. Yeah. And yeah. no, I was not sitting by the boys. I'm up in the right <laughs> corner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I was like a rebel in, in that way, yeah. but still very popular, you know, vice president of the choir and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I think about things that I used to do, what I used to sneak and do, the clear coat of, of nail polish mm -hmm. on my nails or grabbing my mom's razor and shaping my eyebrows because mm -hmm. I wanted to look like Victoria Adams. Yeah. Well, now she's Victoria. Beckham, Posh yeah. Spice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she was Adams at the time. And um, just little, the little nuances of, right. of what I used to do growing up, which all makes right. sense now. I feel like a lot of trans or even just gender nonconforming people look back as adults. And we, I, I do it all the time. And I'm like, there were so yeah. many signs, <laughs> yes. so obvious, you know. But I think, mm -hmm. you know, how Arlo is being raised is different for us. I think it was more, we had, there, there wasn't even a lot of language to put to it. Oh, and there no. was a lot of hiding that went on, at least with me, I know there was. And I remember being very confused with a lot of the things I was doing or was feeling mm -hmm. and you said you, you said you like looked in the mirror and you didn't want that like typical male life mm -hmm. do you think and I've thought about this as a trans person myself do you think that the binary in some way actually helps trans people come out because you can so much not identify with one and so much identify mm -hmm. with the other yeah I think the binary is this might be controversial, but a gift and a curse, because right. I think we all, as trans people, one of the beauties about, you know, the community or the umbrella is we all have the right, just like everyone else, to self-identify, self-determination. Mm -hmm. And with that comes an individual politic for everyone. Right. Right. And so I know for me, it definitely shaped, even though I've been interrogating a lot under, you know, patriarchy and the performance of gender. Right. Um, really interrogating what I enjoy and what I know myself to be, and also what is there what I've leaned into, you know, in order to really survive, if I'm being honest. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, absolutely. And and so yeah, I do think that the binary is a gift and both a curse, mm -hmm. depending on which and depending on how you approach it and view right. it and also your your personal politic around. Right. right. And something that I've actually always thought is like you can believe that there shouldn't be such like a forced binary, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like you can believe that, but you can also not be comfortable with your own. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen people use the argument like, oh, well, why do you care then if like, you know, like why would you be like, you know, people in general, why would you be trans then like if you don't care, like if you think gender shouldn't be so like, whatever, oh, like, mm -hmm. yeah, like box. And it's like, you can believe that, but still just not be comfortable in your own. Yes, that exactly. is true. Because yeah. there are tons of binary trans people, mm -hmm. exactly. you know, yeah. who transition from, you yeah. know, A to B, so to speak. Yeah. Exactly. We, we've had a trans woman in that chair that said, mm -hmm. I'm a very binary trans woman. Oh, and, I am too. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I am too. very proud and happy mm -hmm. for, with that. And I was like, that's great. That's yeah. how you yeah. feel. And that's why I think what you're saying is so true about that it could be a curse and it can be a blessing because mm -hmm. there obviously we've seen what it can do in mm -hmm. very negative ways. But, mm -hmm. you know, even me, for the most part, I really like to just pass as a man. I do have feminine aspects of myself. I paint my nails and these kinds of things. And I really do believe in a fluidity, but at the same time, I like to be a guy. Yeah. A guy. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. Well, that's exactly what I mean. It's like you can believe that there shouldn't have to be such like a forced box, like, you know, like gender roles, but at the same time, like, you can just want to, you know, and we all conform your own. Yeah. We all yeah. Pick, I think that should be acknowledged. There's a cherry picking of sorts. Mm -hmm. We all collectively have to have an honest conversation with ourselves about how we pick and choose things that lean into our privileges. Yes. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of trans people, those privileges are directly connected to survival, right. are directly connected to your next meal on the table or your Absolutely. rent being paid. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, and so, yeah, I think that that's also important to acknowledge because we, we cherry pick, we take from these systems what we might need to make Definitely. it from Monday to Tuesday and then we reject the other or take a critical approach to the other. 100%. Exactly. There could be someone who, you know, believes in more fluidity as a trans person and maybe that is a priv privilege they have because of even their skin color uh -huh. or because of the gender, for instance, if they're more masculine presenting. Mm -hmm. we, we know that there is a disparity, uh, you know, in regard to violence amongst trans women yes. versus trans men. Mm -hmm. So exactly what you're saying is so true. I think that people do have to you know, cherry pick or hold on to the things that might literally of may course. mean survival. Yeah. Mm. 
I kind of wanted to stick back just a little bit into your childhood and it coming out and just what, what age were you when you first told us, say, your mom? Um, I was 14, so it's funny, I'm now 34. And so this was 20 years ago, because mm -hmm. it was in the summertime, and it was quite an interesting mm -hmm. summer. That summer of 2002, I uh, was going from eighth grade to high school. My parents got a divorce. Mm -hmm. I tapped into a bit of a sexual awakening and told my mom the tea. Okay. So, and my friends, you know. And so um, that was quite the summer. <laughs> yeah, that is a big summer. So I entered high school, you know, with, you know, being who I knew myself to be at the time. How did that and feel? And it felt fine. And it felt fine because I was never able to hide it. Right. I just confirmed it. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, I was never able to hide who I was. And so, and that opened me up to a world of, of, of different things, you know. Um, not necessarily bullying. Bullying in certain aspects, but always with words. I was never met with physical violence. Right. It was words. And I didn't care because I had a razor tongue, a sharp tongue. Right. Shout out to Rain, Rain Valdez. I had a razor tongue. And, um, and so, and I also knew what I wanted to address and what I didn't. Mm -hmm. Like, I was one of those kids who, in high school, was like, oh, I'm not worried about that because I'm going to be somebody. Right. Like, you just mm -hmm. wait and see. I, felt I also was terrified of having like a sip of alcohol or, <laughs> you know, what, what, sir, what teenagers do. Yeah. Like, no, I would go to the parties, no beer for me. Because, you know, like programs like D.A.R.E. really scared me. They yeah. Yeah. Really scared me. Yeah, yeah. I thought that if I tried anything, that I would just go down a rabbit hole mm -hmm. and be addicted. And then my dreams would be deferred. And I was like, mm mm. But that's amazing that you had yeah. this so strong in you at that age. Because most teenagers are like, oh, I'm going to go get wasted or whatever. <laughs> but so. I had nothing to run from. I had a pretty good experience like I'm not even gonna front I had a pretty good experience but it also you know created a monster and what I mean when I say that is I'm now actively working to dismantle um, some of the things that I acquired you know back then for survival that are now deemed harmful to me now okay you as they a don't person. to me as a person yeah. they don't align with my experiences now and it's 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 been a quite an experience you know kind of slaying that beast <laughs> right. We had um, Corey Ray, who is the first like transgender prom queen on, and mm -hmm. she said something very similar. She was basically like, you know, I developed these personalities and these different traits that were really kind of defense mechanisms, you know, looking back that mm -hmm. once I was an adult and in therapy, I realized it was just harming me. Yeah. And she's like, I let all that go. And now I'm at a very peaceful place. Yeah. So I think, you yeah. know, just in general, I think there's a lot of people that would identify with that. Just yeah. going through high school, you know, without even identifying as LGBTQIA. And so. resting my worth or my self-esteem really in like male, male validation, like the right. attention I'd get from, you know, yeah. uh, when I was up to things, so to speak, <laughs> you know, that's very harmful, you know. Yeah. And so, um, but at 14 year old me, that was, you know. That's what felt, you it, felt it, like you needed to do. Yeah, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you think, you know, you sound like, you, by what you're saying, you sound like you were such a, like, really sure of yourself and confident. And I, do you really think that was because of your parents? Like, that's what I'm getting. Like, I think when parents have really, you know, strong values and they raise their kids, you know, with so much love, like that love cup is really full. Mm -hmm. Like, I hear a lot of people like you talk about that kind of, you know, growing up that way. Do you yeah, think I, that? Think, I think my parents had a major uh, hand in that, but I should note that I've always been headstrong. Okay. So I've always, you. literally, <laughs> you can ask my parents, I've mm -hmm. always been very matter of fact. And I also think that is what, that's something that honestly helped save me from a lot of bullying and yeah. things like that. Because I do believe that if people see, if people can sniff your Achilles heel, or people can see yes. that you kind of doubt yourself a little bit. That's more, oh. you know, fuel for the flame, so to speak. Absolutely, especially with like social media and being uh -huh. media in general now. Mm -hmm. They find one thing and they just <laughs> And they will, it, yeah. right. And so because I was very sure of myself and not really in an egotistical way, but just always kind of knew who I was. I mean, I had to go through the same things in, in undergrad. I went to an HBCU in the South, you know, in the Bible Belt. So, you know, um, navigating that, I've just always been sure of myself. And so eventually, you know, people left me alone. Were there times being in areas like the Bible Belt that you had that moment where you're like, 
I could say, you know, I could hide the fact that I am trans or this is a moment that I need to say this, re you know, I, regardless of how people are going to respond to me. Yeah. Did you have those moments? Well, ironically, like when I was in college, well, I don't know if this is irony, but when I was in college, I was more so non-binary. That's what okay. it would be considered nowadays. Okay. You know, back then, you know, we used terms like androgynous and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I just, I just always stood ten toes down in, in who I knew myself to be, and no one could challenge that yeah. because I still was. I, I'm, listen, I'm still the same person. Right. I still was very ambitious, very smart. I just knew that there were certain things that people could not take away from me, and I literally rooted so much of myself in who I saw myself to be in the future yes. that a lot of that stuff just rolled off. Or maybe you know. Maybe I put it in a in a little place that has to be addressed later. Who knows? No, I think what you're saying <laughs> is so great. And I was even going to say, like, if you are listening right now and you're a young person, you know, trying to navigate these things, I think what she said is so important because when you have those moments where you feel like people are judging you or maybe you feel prejudiced or whatever it is, f hold on to the things that you know about yourself. Yes. Like, like you were saying, like you, there was things that you knew you wanted. Yes. You knew about yourself and you didn't let anyone take that away. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of young people asking me kind of advice in those moments and I've never even really thought to put it that way, but that's great. Like when you have those things that you know no one else can ever take from you, ever. then mm -hmm. that's power behind yeah. even the right. hardest moments. And then I would just look at people and, and try to find like, oh, well, this happened to them. This, like, literally, that's how I got by a lot of times, yeah. which might be harmful. But it was like I said, I was in survival mode. Yeah. Like, who cares what this person thinks? You right. just wait and see. Yeah. That was my fuel. You just wait and see. So now that we kind of got you know, to know you a little bit, uh, what got you into journalism? So funny thing, right? OK, so picture this. My entire life. I was like in talent shows and choirs, but I also was the reading the assignments mm -hmm. in school. I mean, not the assignments, the announcements rather mm -hmm. in school. And um, so I've always been a bit of a broadcaster. Being a Chicagoan, um, <laughs> there is a bias for super fandom for Oprah Winfrey. Harpo Studios was in Chicago. Right. And so in the 90s, as a kid of the 90s growing up there, you know, that's Jordan, Michael Jordan and Oprah Winfrey were the king and queen of Chicago, yeah. you know, and Harry Carey. There, we had a few notables. Mm -hmm. And so um, I used to always imitate Oprah. That was part <laughs> of my, my thing. I used to take my mom's roll-on deodorant. This is when I was like four. <laughs> I used to take my mom's roll-on deodorant and walk from one arm of the couch to the other, imitating, literally imitating o Oprah. You're like, a car for you, a car for you. <laughs> well, that, was, that was way before then. This is when it was caller, you're on the air. Yeah, yeah. Back in a moment. That's how Oprah threw the commercial at the time. <laughs> And so it's always kind of been part of who I was, at least the broadcast mm. side, because, you know, in seventh grade, that's when I kind of really dove in. You know, Mr. Weiss was my drama teacher, and you'd have to go in his classroom, and that's when you use the phone, and, you know, you punch in, good morning, mm -hmm. so-and-so, mm -hmm. I won't say my school, good morning, <laughs> you know, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, mm -hmm. like that was me. Yeah. Yeah. In high school, what I loved, though, is that we had a full-on news, like, broadcasting program with Mr. Comstock, <laughs> and um, he also taught our speech, but every classroom at my high school had, like, a 33-inch TV, and there was a program named VTV, we were the, we were the Vikings, so mm -hmm. Viking television, mm -hmm. and you had to audition, and that was my first time reading from a prompter, and I became an anchor, and I was an I anchor on Viking television from, like, for, like, I want to say, like, the last two years, I was really knee-deep in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, crazy enough, when I went to college, I went to college on a music scholarship first, mm. and I... You know, this is why it's so unfair to expect 18-year-olds to know oh, what definitely. they want to do with exactly. the rest of their lives. Yeah. <laughs> because when I really sat with it within my first year of undergrad, it's like, what can you do? Like, I was seeking, like, a performance degree. Mm -hmm. mm. What can you do with a performance degree in yeah. music? And I certainly didn't want to be a teacher. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I did not want to be in that choir room <laughs> doing the do, me, re, you know, yeah. la, so, la, ti, do. Yeah. Didn't do any of that. And so it was actually my dad, when I was taking the tour of my school, who was like, why don't you do journalism? And I brushed him off. This is when I was 18. Yeah. I, you can't tell me anything. <laughs> Get out of my face, old man. So I like brushed him off. And then eventually I, I, I went to journalism and I, it, it's been a gift for me because I really do enjoy amplifying, you know, voices of, mm -hmm. of people who 
might, you know, otherwise might not be heard or shown. Yeah. Right. And um, it's been an interesting journey, but that's how I, I got into it. And I'm more yeah. so, I enjoy the broadcast. Like, I enjoy what we're doing, right. you know. <laughs> writing, I can do, mm -hmm. but writing, it can be also very exhausting. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that, that's how yeah. I got in there. And I'm just curious, I mean, you kind of said that you, you did um, imitate Oprah when you were little. Yes. Um, but was there anybody that inspired you to do journalism or kind of get into that more? Um, there was Oprah. I have a few people. Mm -hmm. They're Oprah. They're more so broadcasters. Cheryl Burden, mm -hmm. who was a, an anchor on ABC7 Chicago. Um, mm -hmm. Tamron Hall was actually in Chicago for 12 years on WFLD, our Fox affiliate, oh, wow. before going to MSNBC mm -hmm. and then the Today Show, and now she has her own talk show. Right. Mm. Um, there were a few, even, you know, later on, and this might be controversial, but we all have problematic faves, okay? <laughs> I don't always agree with her, but Wendy Williams even, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. she she really, <laughs> as, a, as a black woman holding it down with yeah. a 30-plus year career in broadcast, mm -hmm she had that hustle and drive about her right. as well. Right. And so, yeah, there were there were a few influences. I can't say as far as like writing articles, because right. I wasn't, I was more of a book reader than mm -hmm. I was like a, let me read the Chicago Sun Times. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But there were certain, just that visibility of certain broadcasters, definitely. I was like, I could, I could do that. I yeah. feel like journalism is a great way, especially like TV journalism, where you still get to feel like a performer in some ways, while also, you know, getting to, like you said, like amplify voices and do yeah. like some good in the world at the same time. You oh, know? it definitely is a performance. Yeah. yeah. It definitely. I just did an, a red carpet and I'm a natural, I'm pretty naturally melancholy. I mean, I'm friendly, I'm an extrovert and I'm a good time girl, mm -hmm. but I'm not walking around with a smile plastered on my <laughs> face 24 seven. And, you know, just taking that time to myself before launching into a red carpet, yeah. because a red carpet is a performance. Yeah, you have definitely. to, you know, talent will match your energy. Yes. So you have to, you know, bring mm -hmm. that. And so, mm -hmm. absolutely. yeah, sometimes it's tiring. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. A lot of yeah. this stuff is, we've talked about that before too. Yeah, like for sure. Social media, you know, even just doing these kinds of things, constantly talking about like, your gender identity, all this stuff, mm -hmm. as important as it is, it does get exhausting. And I think yeah. some people don't realize that. But at the same time, I love it and I would never want to do anything different. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's like the most important thing I've ever done is tell my story so that other young people have mm -hmm. someone to look up to or, or just even to have like words to put to what they're feeling. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, that's a double-edged sword for me yeah. because a majority of my journalism, I should mention, is entertainment. I'm mm -hmm. an entertainment journalist. Yeah. Right. Um, pop culture, things of that nature. Yeah. And I intentionally kind of strayed away from a lot of things regarding identity because a lot of it for me, and I think it might just be the positioning as a black woman who's mm -hmm. trans, is a lot of free labor right. and a lot of... Uh, what I would deem asinine questions. Mm -hmm. And I call a lot of them asinine because I'm someone who does believe that we have an unprecedented, you know, access to information. Right. And there's something for everyone. There are books. If you don't like reading, there are audio books. Yeah. If you don't like audio books, there are podcasts. There's YouTube. If you YouTubes. don't like podcasts, <laughs> there's YouTubes. If you don't like YouTubes, there's documentaries. Mm -hmm. If you don't like documentaries, there's movies. Mm -hmm. Like there's something for everyone. And so I feel like, you know, we walk around with these devices, these phones, you know, in our pockets and purses. And nine times out of ten, what you're asking me can be found in a in a Google search. Absolutely. And, yeah. and it does for me, that my journey through that, it's been a lot of uh, disingenuous mm -hmm. type, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I think, yeah. so. I think some of them also, it's not even to really like ask the question, it's like to like get you to respond. To gaslight you. Yeah, to you know. gaslight you or to just get you to like react yes. in a certain way. It's happened to me too. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think, do you, but do you think, do, or let me rephrase this, do you feel like you have this kind of responsibility um, to be kind of like a role model for younger people, younger trans people, or do you, I've asked this to other trans people sitting in that chair before, and I've gotten kind of all different kinds of answers. Some people are like, absolutely, and some people are like, you know what, it's just not my place. Like, it's not, I'm, that's not what I'm here for. How do you feel? 
I, I don't think that's up to me to determine, you yeah. know? Um, I can just be Char. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and if, much like with everyone, mm -hmm. if you align with me, exactly. then I'm, I guess be, I'll be your role model. Exactly. If you don't align with me, then I'm just another girl, you know, right. running her mouth. Right. <laughs> so I don't want to, I never want to get lost in the sauce of, of focusing on something like that right. because then that's me being inauthentic to myself. Yeah. Exactly. And so the only thing I can give you is Char, and either you like it, you love it, or you it's not your you thing. It, you yeah. hate it. Yeah. And yeah. so and I, yeah. I think that if you are someone younger who does like me and and my visibility or my conversation and things that I talk about, then that's when I that's when the role model title comes in. Got mm -hmm. it. Sure. And yeah. do you get people reaching out to you like that? Oh gosh, yes. Sometimes, you know, that that is something very surreal for me. And I should mention not only just trans youth, they're yeah. cis youth, like yeah. cis het, you know, black girls, yeah. you know, um, that it, it's sometimes it's very overwhelming because yeah. I, I'm like now I'm 34. I'll be 35 in six months. And it's like, oh, my gosh, these people think I got the answer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have the answers. No, I know exactly. You know, still figuring about. a lot of this out. And yeah. so I do get some very um, nice or inquisitive emails. I have been asked to be a mentor. It's it's it, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah. can too. I know what yeah. you mean. I, people ask not only about like my transition, but also about parenting. And sometimes I want to be like, I'm still figuring that out. Yeah. Like that I, you know, <laughs> had Arlo when I was so young that pretty much this whole time I've just been doing exactly what I how I would want to be mm -hmm. treated when I was their age, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's honestly kind of guided it. But other than that, and then the kind of the basics, make sure that they've eaten and <laughs> <laughs> done the homework. Don't say, yeah, don't, don't stay up all night. Um, other than that, you know, it's really learning as I go. So sometimes I get overwhelmed too because like there's so many people looking to me for that content, yeah. and I'm like, I I hope I'm telling you the right thing because I hope I don't want to say something and then you go do that and it like messes yeah. your kid up. <laughs> yeah. you know? well, you get a, your get out of jail free card with that is you know this is my experience. Yeah. This isn't the gospel, so yeah. to speak. I right. always say tell that. you yeah. my experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like when people ask about homeschooling, I'm like, I homeschool Arlo for these reasons. Yes. This is why mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to do this or you should because right. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's it's definitely finicky out there. Yeah. You gotta be careful. <laughs> um, oh yeah, and I was just gonna ask, is there any sort of uh, like favorite topics that you like to report on, I guess you would say? Yeah, you know, for like I mentioned, I'm entertainment pop culture. That's my mm. sweet spot. I, um, I do do a delicate dance between heart news and that. And, and the reason why is that like I did an internship in undergrad and that's when I determined that heart news was not for me. Like mm. I was with the reporters in the vans, you know, going to the scene of the crime, mm. so to speak. And you know, it was it was very trying. That's the first time I was called the N word to wow. my face. Wow. Um, it is, you know, there were accidents. You know, it it just was a lot. And that I was like, there's no way that I can do this every day. I tip yeah. my hat to everyone in mm -hmm. hard news. And yeah. when I say hard news, I mean like your traditional like yeah. Channel Seven, yeah. Channel Five. Right. You know, even you know the 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 linear cable news networks mm -hmm. like an MSNBC or CNN. Mm -hmm. And so when I really sat with myself, I was like, I have an affinity for pop culture. Mm -hmm. I'm ton I, I got tons of trivia inside of me <laughs> and fun facts. Mm -hmm. And it just felt lighter mm -hmm. for me. And so those are my favorite types of topics. But I do not shy away from difficult conversations. Right. Gotcha. And I do not shy away, especially in this climate. Where we are today mm -hmm. is a lot of the times entertainment, you know, has meshed with hard news. So yeah. exactly you know, what I was everything thinking, is right? so hyper political. It is. And so I, I do not shy away from that, but that is why I've tacked on, you know, like media personality or pundit, because as a journalist, you're not supposed to have an opinion. Right. But I feel like I'd be doing a disservice with the the, you know, little bit of visibility that I do have mm -hmm. as a right. black woman in these spaces who's trans, mm -hmm. to not be like to not use my voice in the ways in which Absolutely. I Absolutely, I completely so. agree with that. But I prefer I, entertainment. Yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think entertainment is always more fun, but I think mm -hmm. like even what we're trying to do with this podcast and what I do with my TikTok and all my social media is that fine line. Like I try to use my voice and be political where I can while also making, sometimes just making people laugh. Yeah. You know? I think that's kind of a great mix to be in. And I think also as, you know, LGBTQIA plus people, mm -hmm. I think... Sometimes you have to use your voice in ways maybe others 
have more of a privilege not to. Mm -hmm. And I realize that like I can get more people interested in what I say if it's a little more lighthearted and yeah. you know. You deliver so. it in only the way that you can. Exactly. And, and mm -hmm. same here. So it's it's definitely a delicate balance. But right. I'd much rather, you know, talk Chloe and Tristan <laughs> talk Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, I don't even want to say her name on this, but talk those people. <laughs> those so who's your favorite person you've interviewed so far? Oh my gosh, I don't know if that's fair. There's so many good ones. You have to choose one. <laughs> um, uh, what I will say is most recently, Brandi Evans. And Brandi Evans is an actress. She's the star of uh, a show called Pea Valley, which airs on Stars. And she just felt familial to me. Okay. Like talking to her felt like a cousin. Oh, I love that. Um, that's but nice. there's there's so many good, good, good people that I've talked to. I don't know if even know if that's a fair question. Mm -hmm. um, I love Candy Burris. She's an Atlanta housewife and a songwriter. Um, who else has been really fun? Um, Miss J from Top Model. I don't know okay. if you oh, remember yes. Miss J yes. from Top Model. has been really fun. Billy Porter. Okay. Shout out to Billy's always good. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's, it's run the gamut. Yeah. Um, typically, I have very pleasant experiences with my right. interviews. Yeah. There's only been one person who, I, who I'll tell you after the show. <laughs> okay. There's okay. been one person who I've been like, oh, absolutely not. And it broke my heart because I was a fan of him. Oh, really? No. Oh, gosh, yes. He's part of, he's a, a star of one of my favorite movies. Oh, no. And What's he your was favorite movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have plenty. But this was, you know, uh, I'll give you a hint. It was a film that was that is now streaming on Netflix. Can I say that? It's now streaming yeah, on Netflix. Yeah. And it is from like around the 2004 era and it's mm. a teen. So uh, flick. our listeners are gonna have to do some <laughs> research here to see who's mean. <laughs> There's um, so many good 2000s movies though. Yeah. Yeah. And I should mention he wasn't necessarily mean. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't my cup of tea. Okay. And mm -hmm. I don't think I was his. He okay. just, ugh. Just didn't vibe. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. You know that happens, like, yeah. being out in L.A., I've met some people that, like, <laughs> I, like, love. Yeah. Uh, not even, I won't even say movies. Like, sometimes it's just, like, TikTokers. Yeah. And then I meet them, and I'm like, that is so not, disappointing. Yeah, that's not what I expect. I thought you were going to be a little sweetie. Yeah. So. Most yeah. of the time, like, I mean, just so far, because I know I'm young, but, like, so far, the people that I've met have been really, really nice. <laughs> Usually yeah. they are. You, I was about to say, yeah, usually people are. I haven't had very many negative yeah. experiences in yeah. LA with people. So, <laughs> where can we listen to you talk or your, see your writing? So, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm freelance. Mm -hmm. I've written for Essence Magazine. I've written for Variety mm -hmm. for Emmy season. <laughs> um, I've written for them. Last year, oh. I wrote three articles a week for wow. them. Wow. Yes, that for was, how long? For a, a, about a year. I started Whoa. in like February and then I left in November. Jeez. So it was about a year and it was it was quite a learning lesson. It was yeah. it was good, but it was very stressful. Mm -hmm. Every Tuesday <laughs> I had three articles due. Wow. Jeez. By like three PM. That's a it lot. It was grueling. Yeah. That is I would go cool. to my favorite coffee shop, <laughs> which I won't name. <laughs> but they don't have power. They don't have like Wi outlets oh. there. So what that does is it forces you to focus. Put that phone down because oh. I was going to like WeWork and I'd be there gotcha. all day because they got you know the cold brew on yeah. tap. That you can <laughs> charge your laptop. Yeah. But if you go to a place that you cannot charge your laptop, you're like I only you have this much time. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get it done. That's yeah. a good idea. And so actually. I've been all over the place. Um, I am on Channel Q, which is a an Odyssey station. We are channelq.com slash listen. Mm. And that's where you can tune in. I'm there every Friday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. on a show called Let's Go There with Shira and Ryan, Shira Lazar and Ryan Mitchell. Awesome. I'm the third Mike. I like to tease and say, you know, I'm the Anna Navarro who pops up on Friday. Yeah. If you watch The View, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so who pops up on Friday. And um, yeah, I mean, I go live on Instagram and kind of do, mm -hmm. and, like you were just mentioning, Jesse, like that that fusion of like what's been going on this yeah. week and yeah. you know what I've been up to and mm -hmm. right. things like that. Like awesome. if the you know the benefit thing happens, do you go online? No, you know what? What I will say is for the month of July, I've taken a huge back seat. And I've done that in the name of self-care. I've learned to really listen to my body. Important. And I don't want to overexert myself. And so mm -hmm. if I do not have to work, which I have had the privilege of not having to work. Mm -hmm. Um, except for when I feel like it, mm -hmm. 
then I've just been like, I have not really been active on socials mm -hmm. this month because it's just been too much. For I me think social media honest. breaks are so important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I probably haven't taken one. I don't like, I'm not even exaggerating probably like eight years. Like I just never stopped yeah. on it unless we went camping like three years ago and I think I had five days where I physically couldn't not use even. my phone because we were in the woods, <laughs> so I didn't have service. Now, do you do it out of a love or do you do it out of, because you're part of the rat race, you succumb you know to what? the Hollywood it's way. You know what, it's both. So I, when I started, I never, if you would have asked me years ago what I was going to be doing with my life, and I, someone was like, yeah, one day you'll be doing social media, I wouldn't have believed you. Mm -hmm. I was actually kind of anti it, and I studied philosophy in college. Nice. I thought I was going to be a professor, or I didn't know what I was going to do with it yeah. yet. Um, and my minor was queer theory, so I knew I was gonna be going in that route. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you know, I started just posting my life just kind of for fun here and there mm -hmm. with Arlo showing that at the time I was this lesbian parent and it kind of took off yeah. so fast out of my hands <laughs> that all of a sudden I was quitting every job I had and just doing this full time. And now I really do have a love for it because I was just thinking about this the other day. If I wouldn't have started posting on, posting on TikTok, my life would not be where it is right mm -hmm. now. With the support and love and everything I get, there's days that are so difficult. And if I don't like go to my comments and see the hundreds of people being so supportive, sometimes I'm like, I don't think they realize what they do for me. Yeah, you yeah. know, and that's why now I feel yeah. this responsibility to give back because they really have done so much for me. Yeah. So yeah, it gets exhausting, hundred percent. They get exhausted as well. <laughs> like, you know, they don't. Obviously, don't do it as much as I do. I kind of mm. bring them in when I right, have to, but right. yeah, it's, it's I a think, lot. Yeah. I think it was the trauma of 2020 that made me kind of take a back seat yeah. because I'm like, you know, you yeah. do fall prey to that pressure of stay visible, stay yes. current. And I'm like... 2020 was a really interesting year. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it really putting was. it lightly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I am putting it lightly. So yeah, yeah so that's what I've told, like, I, my mom was like, yeah, but you have just the easiest job in the world. I'm like, you don't understand what, it, what it's yeah. like to never, like, if you take two days off, you've missed a month. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, and it's like, like staying visible, like you're saying, all the time. And, like, know? obviously we're super thankful, of course. Um, but yeah, it does. It does definitely get like a little mm -hmm. tiring at times. That is a performance as well. Yeah, to a degree. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. gotta. Some days, you know, we're human. We wake mm -hmm. up and don't feel like yeah. it, but you feel that that pressure to do yeah. it. But what I, I I asked you that question because I'm getting more and more comfortable with taking extended breaks mm -hmm. because I've been trying to approach this entire thing with the mindset of what's for me won't pass me by. Yes. So I don't right. have to subscribe to that culture because what has my name on it will find me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if I need to sit out and, you know, watch some TV and read some books and treat myself to nice meals and just have it so that you can reach me via phone number. Mm -hmm. And I'll still answer my emails and stuff. But as far as like engaging in discourse, yeah. and I also think being a news girl has contributed to that because mm -hmm. there's just so much going on. Right. I open Twitter with one eye squinted I know. I, I know. know that there's know. going to be something there. Um, and even, you know, Instagram, I'm not really active on TikTok. Yeah. TikTok gives me anxiety, which I can openly admit. TikTok I is the only that, one that doesn't. It's like the least of all. <laughs> See, we're opposite. Yeah. Because for me, I think that I need like a photo. Yeah. So like, it, it, I think it's the endless scrolling yeah. of videos that just sends me all over the place. For me, like the kind of more like stressful part of TikTok is that there's just everybody's talking about issues 24 seven. And, yeah. and in some ways it's important, of course. Yeah. Um, but you know, just for like my own personal, like, yeah. you know, like viewing it, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's just always something going on. And then what, what good is it to talk about it if you're not putting tangible action behind mm. it? Yeah. I've realized, you know, when you yeah. look at numbers and exit polls, yeah. A lot of people are, you know, I feel like it's performance art. Mm. So it's yeah. like, what is it? Yeah. And don't get me wrong, like I said, like sometimes it is good to talk about certain issues and stuff, of yeah. course, but like it's just kind of like, I feel like there's always, even if it's just like drama about celebrities or something, mm -hmm. there's just always something yeah. going on when, yes. I, when I scroll on TikTok. I totally agree. Yeah. My goal is to eventually be a place where I can just do social media purely for fun. And that's what I would love. Yeah. Like, I, you know what? I love that you love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you love that. My yeah. goal is to one day have someone run mine. Yeah. With me approving <laughs> first, what are you uploading? You know? Yeah. Um, because exactly. it does it does get a lot. And I, I imagine, I mean, you're more visible than me. You have way more followers than me, but it's so refreshing to know mm -hmm. that you uh, get showered with positive comments. Yeah, no, we I get the negative. Yeah, yeah, we do get so much. We get it, trust me. <laughs> that can get really overwhelming, but I always think it's like, yeah. I would say a 
five percent positive or five percent negative. It's and when honestly I think about that. I'm like, to me, it depends on the video. Like, there's some where most of it is pretty positive, and then there's been a couple where people are just going like, yeah. Ugh. Instagram's way more negative for me. I almost have to brace myself before mm, I post. That's so like, interesting. To me, brutal. to me, it's not even necessarily like which is more negative because I think both can be very, very negative. To me, it's more like the type of negativity. Like, I feel like TikTok is more like stupid teenagers saying like really annoying stuff but like Instagram is more like dark like I feel like I've seen like when I go on Instagram I feel like I see more just like messed up comments where on TikTok the death threat yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're like TikTok don't get me wrong there is some of that but like the way that it is is like a little bit more just like stupid if yeah. that makes sense yeah. silly yeah it, it, I mean it can definitely still be you know wrong mm -hmm. but it's a little bit more like uh, than that's interesting. Instagram. I wonder, someone needs to do a case study. Yes, yeah. Exactly. You know? yeah. I know, I yeah. think about this kind of stuff all the time. I'm like, why is each app so different? But and you know, I think it just attracts I people. Something that I realized too is I feel like Instagram does not, okay, I don't know if I can say this, but like, I feel like Instagram does not have guidelines. Oh, they don't. It's the wild, like, wild west. Yeah. Be, like that's something. Unless that's you're using someone's music. Yeah. <laughs> that's when they get you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're like, I will sue you they're, for your life. They're, they're like, they're like, Death threats? Eh. Yeah. Music? No, that uh. is true. Well, Twitter, you know, has been criticized for being the same mm -hmm. way. There was oh, for sure. Death yeah. Threat Twitter is insane. Or, yeah, there was a death threat. <laughs> someone I was just watching documented mm -hmm. uh, that was up for like eight months, and it was a threat towards the yeah. vice president. Uh, Kamala Harris yeah. and Twitter did nothing you know yeah. about that's, it yeah that's, it's crazy on TikTok if you even say a negative word it kinda, immediately puts your video that's kind of what I mean by like TikTok is more like even though yes they can be very harmful comments they're still the way that they're worded is more like stupid where like Instagram I feel like doesn't have like barriers like I feel yeah. like people just say the weirdest stuff on there but you know TikTok has been criticized for oh, biases for sure. you yeah know? there is no, 100% have. like if you type in Black Lives Matter your video will be removed yeah. or flagged oh if yeah you type in the opposite Yes. You're fine to upload. Oh no, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Every all of these apps have their pros and exactly. Their cons. It's, it's it's but there's a strange. gift and a curse to it. It brings mm -hmm. us closer together. That's exactly. how we yeah. met. Exactly. Yeah. Just you know? like you're talking about the binary. I think that when you were saying that, actually, what popped into my mind was I feel like that's kind of like this, you know, like this example of life, right? Like so many things that we encounter, you could there's a good part and a bad part. And it's kind yeah. of what you take from it. Yeah. and what you use mm -hmm. with it, so. And yeah. embracing the gray. Yeah. I wrote an essay about that at the beginning of yes. the year, that mm -hmm. life is not binary, it is not black and white. Mm -hmm. There's tons of gray area, and that's the only way you're so gonna true. stay afloat. Of course. Absolutely. Gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's balance, it's <laughs> yeah. so balanced, and I think where people get so out of balance is so one way or so the other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. and like you were just saying like a second ago, like that's why I hate when, like, like what I was saying earlier, is like when people try to use that argument, like when it comes to like the binary, like, against trans people when they say stuff like, okay, well, if you think it should be more fluid, then like, why are you trans? Like, shouldn't you just not care? Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's like, you can think that stuff can be more fluid, but at the same time, not be comfortable in your own sex. Yes, multiple truths can exist Ex as well. Exactly. Yeah, Ex exactly. Amazing. So, I mean, what what can we see in your future? What yeah. do you, what's, what's going like, on? Like a future goal. Yeah. Oh, a future goal. So the mm -hmm. goal is television. Yeah. Mm. Even though I've been definitely reimagining some things because it does seem like, like I've always wanted a talk show. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. I don't care if it's me solo mm -hmm. or me a part of an ensemble. Right. I've always wanted a talk show. I would but watch it. Forced to, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I've been forced to reexamine some things because the, the model in which the traditional talk talk show mm -hmm. has been made is totally different now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and now that, you know, shout out to Sherry Shepard and Jennifer Hudson, who have shows coming in the fall, things are just different. Like, yeah. I think Wendy, well, Tamron Hall is the last, like, journalist yeah. to have a talk show, or the last, like, I guess, like, traditional personality. Like, Ellen's gone, yeah. Wendy's gone, Oprah. Oprah's gone. Yeah. It's Kelly Clarkson, Drew Barrymore, mm -hmm. Jennifer Hudson, Sherry Shepard. So the landscape is totally different now. And so I'm still gunning for that though. I'm not yeah. I'm not willing to let go of that. And no, hopefully, you yeah. hopefully that, that's coming in the future because every year gets better and better for yeah. me. I should note that. Mm -hmm. and that's you, the blessing. Do you almost have this like vision, like kind of like when I was like getting into this stuff, I was like, you know, everyone doing these kind of talk shows or these podcasts, I want to do it different. Like I have this vision. Do you have one of those? Are you kind of more 
want is you want to emulate some what someone you already love. Mm-hmm. I don't want to emulate anyone. Yeah. I'm, I I want to be just Shar. Mm-hmm. But I do think that I would be the happy medium between like a Wendy and an Oprah. Okay. Because I have the empathy of that. Oprah to lean in and have those types of conversation. Right. But I have the humor of Wendy yeah. where, you know, we Her can get humor. audience reactions. Yeah. And that's something, these are things that have been told to me, but also that I lean into because yeah. there's mm-hmm. there's only one Shar Jocelle. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so, um, of course, I have my influences, but no, you know, and I can dance like Ellen. <laughs> I'm out dancing. Like, it'll, it'll be components from everyone. Yeah, you know, we seriously. can do game of games. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, there's really no, no vision as long as I'm not sucked into doing hard news every yeah. day. Yeah. You know, I could do the, I think I could do the view. Yeah. Let me, mm-hmm. let me just guest host. Yeah. <laughs> just Start see, there. Yeah. My toe, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Do you want to ask our first question, our closing yeah, question? Yeah, so these are our closing questions that we like to ask everybody. All right. <laughs> what is one single thing that you would want to be known for after you leave this earth? The one single thing that I would like to be known for is... Hmm... This is hard. It's a big um, question. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I'd say for part of me wants to say my perseverance. Mm-hmm. Like I want to lean into that, but I yeah. also know that sometimes that can be harmful because of the whole strong black woman trope. You right. know, I enjoy yeah. softness. I enjoy right. a soft life. I deserve a soft life. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, but that's the, that's honestly the first word that that comes to mind. Like this tenaciousness. Mm-hmm. I want to be, I guess, known for my, for having the audacity to be, you know, who I am and to stand absolutely. firm in my convictions. Listen, yes. I'm I'm teachable. You know, I, I have no issue, no qualm in saying, you know, I was wrong, you know, and I think that that's a superpower of mine, especially given mm-hmm. that the landscape nowadays is everyone wants to be, wants to make sure there's no mistakes. Exactly. And, you know, I can acknowledge that mistakes are inevitable. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that I want to be known for having firm opinions, but still mm-hmm. also being very teachable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, leaning into that, uh, the audacity to be, who I know myself to be. Love it. In spite of it all. The whole world, I feel like, is rooting against me in some regard because of the intersections of my identity. Right. Anti-blackness is rampant. Transphobia is rampant. Mm -hmm. Racism is rampant. Mm -hmm. You know, sexism. There's, there's, you know, being black and trans and a woman is quite interesting. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. It's quite interesting. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. As I love that answer. Love that. Thank you. Maybe got chills. I think I've gotten chills. (laughs) Like every 30 times, <laughs> yeah. Just, everyone of you is just so amazing, <laughs> and I just love hearing all these different voices and opinions. And it's so crazy because we ask these same two last questions, mm. but everyone's answer is different. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. none have been the same. And it's just so, it, like, I just Some get this feeling. Of, yeah, yeah. I, get it, <laughs> I get it over my body where it just makes me so proud, you know? Yeah. yeah. Do you think 10-year-old Char would be proud of Char now? Oh, my gosh. Are you trying to make me cry? <laughs> Come on now. Um... <laughs> Yes, I do. I know that 10-year-old Shar mm-hmm. would be very, very proud of Shar today. Mm-hmm. Very, very proud. Because you know what? 10-year-old Shar did not believe in the possibility. Mm-hmm. You know, 10-year-old Shar knew uh, was was coming into her own, but was very terrified. Mm-hmm. Because the only examples that 10-year-old Shar had was, you know, trans women, particularly black trans women, being treated as sideshows on like right. Mari and Jerry Springer. So it did not, 10-year-old Shar did not believe that being black and trans and a woman would allot to this well-rounded life or mm-hmm. this well-rounded, exactly. you know, lived experience. Thought I would be relegated to a very specific sector of society. Mm-hmm. And that's not to take away from those women's stories, but, um, I don't think that 10 year old Char could have imagined mm-hmm. all of the things that I've had the opportunity to to do and all of the things that I'm going to do in the future. So yes, yeah. I think exactly. I think 10 year old Char would be, you know, amazed <laughs> and that's putting it lightly. Yeah, yeah. I agree and I, yeah. I'm proud of you so I definitely agree with and I think what you're saying <laughs> is so true. I mean, I think what's so important about having people like you sitting in that chair is that I want the 10 year old Char Mm -hmm. right now listening Mm -hmm. to be able to see this beautiful, happy, Mm well-rounded human sitting there talking about how proud they are to be who they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 
thank you so much yeah. for all of this. It was so great. Yeah. <laughs> seriously amazing, beautiful. I loved everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for having me. Of this course. was fun. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> fun. And if you want to go ahead and look in the camera and um, tell our listeners and our viewers where to find you. You can find me everywhere across all socials at Char Says So. That's Char with an S, and that says so. Because a lot of you all type in Char Say So, so <laughs> Char Says So. Love Perfect, it. amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. Stay tuned for more weekly episodes on the Pass Your Bedtime YouTube channel and all streaming platforms. This was Interview with my kid. <laughs>